Michael, lead us off in the weekly mic check. Testing. No, this is Patrick. I said Michael. <laughs> okay, you may have to turn. You may have to turn us up a smidge. Maybe me. Not too sure. Hold on, let me get situated. You might hear my jacket a lot this episode. Whatever. Oh, so you're number one this time. Oh, Jesus. It's going to fuck me all up. (laughs) Testing. Test. Test. Am I number two now? Too quiet. Number two. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. How's- I apologize for my co-host's sudden and egregious outbursts. Yeah. I bet zero people get that, but it's fine. That or they really just don't care about being offended. Or Parks and Rec. Yeah. It's okay. <sighs> Alright, dude. I think we're good. Alright, man. I think. Welcome back. To another episode of the Buffalo Happy Hour. Mike, what's up? I'm wearing a jacket because the <laughs> Buffalo Happy Hour headquarters <laughs> is like 14 degrees. We are filming this in the bottom of the Key Bank Center. No, I'm just kidding. That'd be sick though, wouldn't it? Yeah. When was the last time you were at a hockey game? Last I season. I feel like, so, what was it? Last season. Yeah. What yeah. game did you go see? I don't even remember. I think it was the Panthers. Those are always the cheapest. Yeah, well, my and buddy's got them. seasons. Oh, sick. So I just That's went with cool. him. Yeah, yeah. Panthers, like the st- stupid teams that nobody wants to go see. Right. I'm going for the first time in... Well, I go every year to go see the Sabres versus the Bruins, obviously. Whatever. Because that's all I care about, are my, yeah. are my bees. Suck, Brick. But <laughs> Bruins so suck. So I'm going to the game on Tuesday, the 28th, versus the Ottawa Senators. That'll be a good game. Yeah, it'll be cool. Yeah. And then... After that, going to do a little checky check again, um, going to the Bruins game on March something or another. Tickets for that are like 93 bucks a piece, though. Why? I don't know. Because Bruins are good and Sabres blow and people just want to go see the Bruins play. Yeah, but what if we make the wild card? You're not going to. Listen. Sabres blow, dude. Yo, did you know that Derek Jeter got every person to vote except one to get him in the, the Hall of Fame? fame. Yeah. One person didn't vote him in. Who was it? No one knows for good reason because that guy would probably just get just be dead. destroyed in the streets. How does that work? Do you know how that process works? No, but uh, well, I, it's is it a jury of your peers? I don't think it's peers. I think I don't know specifics. I just know that it's kind of set up with like the NFL. There's like a panel. Oh, okay. Yeah. And everybody voted except for one. Yeah. That blows. Trash. Do you? I don't follow baseball that closely. Do you feel like he should be in? Oh my god! Yeah. Absolutely. He's there's a lot of controversy on that though. Like I feel like people are kind of torn. No. No one's torn. Everyone knows that he should get in. Do they though? Yeah. He, his batting average is three hundred for his career. Don't know what that means. It's isn't batting five hundred good. <laughs> You're adorable. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I've never watched He's, baseball in my life. Yeah, yeah. It's, I've gone to a Bison's game, so basically I've never watched baseball in my life. Gotcha. But there, it's it's too in-depth for me to sit here and try to even begin to describe and teach baseball to you. Is it the higher so the many number? Acronyms. Yeah, like you always want to bat 1,000. But it's Is not. Is that like one for one? Yeah, but it's oh, not. Well, then that's easy. Why don't they just call it one for one instead of 1,500 or 50% or 100%? Decimals, dude. 500 is stupid. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. It's America's game. You think we're going to... it's 0.500, right? Really? It's what it is? Yeah. 0. 500? Yeah, 0. 500. You think that us Americans are going to create a game and then bring logic and common sense That's true. into statistics? We we don't even use the same system as the rest of the world. Yeah, I know. So that wouldn't even make sense. Right. Why don't we? I know that we're the greatest place in the entire world. Sorry, everybody else. We have a listen in Iran. Oh, boy. But... Yeah. I know that we're the best country in the entire world, but why do we differ from everybody else? It's just so inconvenient. Wah. <laughs> Cry about it, bro. <laughs> when, when, I mean, I don't care. Of course. I don't travel out of the country much. Why would I? America's the best. That, but yeah, like, You're not wrong. But... Isn't it more... like? Do you know the kilometer to miles ratio? Like, like how, the many clicks, for it? how many clicks are in a mile? Yeah. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. 
I should know this, but I don't because I just I kind of zone out when it comes to kilometers because I just walk them. Does the because every time I had to use that system, I was in the service. So, so the I, service I w- uses yeah. metric too. Yeah. Then that doesn't make any sense. Why the common people don't? I don't know. It what doesn't say, make man. sense. Yeah, dude. we always like. Remember that phrase I said? I was like, "What's your fifty meter target?" Yeah. It's, and then no one knew meters. what you were talking about. Yeah, but Justin ate it up though. <laughs> yeah, he's like, "I love that. We're gonna use that for now." Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, but yeah, we use grid squares, which is it's like a thousand kilometers inside of a grid. So, but I, I would just walk. I'm mm-hmm. like, how far is this movement? They're like 12 clicks. It's like sick. And then so you just So a click walk. is a kilometer? Yeah. Okay. What are so. you, dude? Knowledge. Knowledge. But I yeah. was watching a uh, YouTube video the other day of Jocko Willink yeah. talking about all the Navy SEALs movies and how realistic versus, uh, versus unrealistic they are. Oh, his breakdown? Yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly, they're more realistic than I thought they would be. Well, you have to remember a lot of the movies he that were picked for him, like Act of Valor, mm-hmm. they've used real Navy SEALs to make that movie. Yeah, true. That's, you know what I mean? True, so yeah. like they're they're shooting live rounds the whole time. They're using the tactics they would normally use. They added some Hollywood aspects, mm-hmm. but it's you know, it is what it is. But yeah. people now they know. They know what fake looks like at this point, so you really can't deviate too much. Um it's pretty interesting though. And then Hollywood actors that take those roles on actually care. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's true. So, like, first American Sniper, right? He's he came out and said it a gajillion times in different interviews. Like, hey, I'm not. I'm really trying to create a spot on image of Chris Kyle because I don't want to insult him, his right. family, yeah. and you know his legacy, which is nice for once that you know someone cares. Yeah, yeah, but. I shouldn't say for once, but yeah. But either way, I mean, why don't we use the same system as everybody else? I mean, yeah. when, when you're back-to-back world champs, you can do what you want. <laughs> so, <laughs> let the haters hate, bro. Can we go three-time world champs? Too we soon. could. Is it too soon? No, it's not too soon, but we could. Because <laughs> it's never going to happen. Correct. Actually, um, hashtag not a sponsor, but on Joe Rogan's podcast, he brought that <laughs> ex-CIA agent back on, and he talked about it. There's a 20-minute clip on YouTube where the, oh, the guy um, talks about... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The like super Edward Snowden, that guy. <clears throat> I think like the older white guy that's still in like decent shape. Who's oh no, former CIA. Oh, I thought you were talking about the CIA agent that spilled the beans on the no, government not spying. No, not the treason traitor dude. dude. I love him. Whatever. So cool. I don't. Whatever. It was a good movie. All right. Anyway, so who? Yeah. So I don't. Hold on. I can look it up. But anyways, he had him on and he talked about World War Three and how people flipped out for no reason. And it was always a reaction like that, dude. You can't trust anything you hear now like yeah nothing it was interesting because joe rogan would bring up the different oh it's right here the the breakdown of jocko willick is actually back on my youtube feed after i already watched it yeah. but he uh he brought up all the same points he's like jocko willick uses the same microphones that we do just saying for his yeah, podcast yeah i saw that love it he, except uh, he does it without the pop filter like a fucking man and you and i are behind these pop filters like we want our voice to sound better I just want to ensure that the people are happy. Yeah, damn right. It was before. I don't. I can't find it now, dude. He posts so many videos. It's there's disgusting. no way I can pull it up. But anyways, I struggle editing this one. Yeah, can you imagine doing three three hour interviews no, a day? Editing a day, yeah. like no. But like people go crazy over that stuff. As soon as that happened, the like the whole Iran thing. Yeah, everyone went up in arms. Like. They're going to draft me. It's like, bro, you've eaten pizza for the past 17 months straight. You're not getting drafted to the army. Correct. No one, you wouldn't know what you're doing. The draft would never come back. It just, it's bothers me. It's an act of Congress. People are so uneducated on the, literally the inner workings of the government. They almost have no idea. And honestly, this isn't a political stance or anything. It's on both sides of the aisle. People all over don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, correct. And these news outlets that people strive to believe they have to understand that news outlets do things for ratings or else they wouldn't be a news outlet anymore. It's all based on money. So if CNN didn't get, or Fox News will go both sides, if they didn't get people watching their shit, they wouldn't be still here. Right. So it's in their best interest to embellish stories. That way people can get interested in it. Mm -hmm. (sighs) It's interesting because mainstream media is bordering on the P word of propaganda. Right. And people are, like, catching on. It's interesting because a lot of, I feel... My opinion, I feel a lot of people our age are 
kind of over the two party system mm-hmm. and they're like both parties suck it's like okay cool like i think more and more people around our age are making that stance because they don't want conflict mm-hmm. so they're saying that they hate both parties to avoid anybody from judging or coming back with an argument or whatever yeah. so it's non-confrontational but they really don't understand if they're if there was a third party that was actually going to take out one of the, you know, the left or the right mm-hmm. in in the debates or for president, I don't think that they would even understand what that really meant or how to vote for the third party, right. which is interesting. But, yeah, it's wild. And you would see people moving towards, if there was a three party, you would see people moving towards div- getting back into two parties. Like, if there was a third party that was in between both the left and the right, you mm-hmm. would see people from both parties going there. So eventually it would just be two parties again anyway. Exactly. Because of just people transporting to different parties. Right. I kind of lost faith in polls specifically when Harambe was like a leading nominee. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Dude, that was so ridiculous. Do you remember that? Like, yeah. They had like, these you, nuts. Oh, yeah. yeah, we got a drink. Oh, darn. Yeah. Um, yeah, they had D's nuts and Harambe as D's leading candidates. Nuts. Yeah. Got like, him. This is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> and it's because nobody cares. Yeah. Did you ever watch the movie or the TV series Designated Survivor? No. It's with uh Kiefer Sutherland and he is a so basically the premise of the show is it's on Netflix. And I believe that there are three seasons in at this point, two seasons, three seasons, something like that. The woman who plays Ita- or Italia Ritchie is like my woman crush of the year. Gina knows that it's fine. But anyway, so the show is about everybody, like, they have a designated survivor from each party to go sit out the State of the Union address just in case if something catastrophic happens to the State of the Union address where everybody dies. Mm-hmm. There's someone in the Senate or in the government that can jump in and be president for the time being. Mm-hmm. And Kiefer Sutherland is like a HOA guy, the, the housing authority. So he sits out the Senate or this uh, State of the Union address and the State of the Union gets bombed. So he's the only one left. So now he, as an independent, has to come in and battle between both the Republicans wanting to get in and the Democrats wanting to get in. So it's an interesting perspective on people who deal with politics or are interested in politics because it is this independent coming in and trying to toe the line between both the Republicans and the Democrats. And it's just an interesting it's an interesting take on a show that I haven't seen before because normally you see a one sided to get certain views. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I have I have an off the topic question too. So when you were in high school, did you have anybody openly express their political views every single day in school? And then that was it. Like they, they were literally not like pushing the agenda, but mm-hmm. they let everyone know what side they were on. I don't think so. Did you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And it was really cool because I give I give the staff in the high school a lot of credit because they allowed the environment. So they basically stood by and smiled. And they're like, this is cool because this is a lot of teaching moments that we can touch on. And it incorporated outside curriculum mm-hmm. aspects of teaching, which is why I value education so much because teachers can, I mean, they're like instrumental in development and you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I was a, I was a junior and a senior and there was a student that was openly, uh, openly liberal and which is fine, obviously. And there were buttons and they were just prancing around the halls. And then if you asked a question, you got an answer, you know, and it wasn't necessarily always negative or derogatory. Mm -hmm. It was, more than not an open dialogue to conversation that you could have. Sure. But it was really cool because nobody shut it down Mm -hmm. like staff wise. So then you would go through U S history, junior year, um, AP Euro senior year, or just your globals. And then it would come up and the teachers would touch on it. And they're like, yeah, you know, like there's, you're going to encounter a lot of people that you don't agree with Mm -hmm. or you do agree with and it's, it's okay. And then they would speak on it. So that's interesting because I. But thought, why did that get so lost from then till now? Because so now it's, I mean, in in everyday situations, you're not going to get 
a combative person that doesn't want to talk to you because their political beliefs are different. It's highlighted by the media and by stories on Facebook and all that stuff. Yeah, The majority of the people do not want to fight about things because they're open to different thoughts. There's there's a lot of compromise that have been lost in dialogue and conversations. So what's pretty interesting, what it's it's to the point mm-hmm. where if you say I like former President Obama as a person, I just couldn't stand his policies. However, I can't stand the current President Trump as an individual, but I love his policies. And then you're like, oh, well, well, then where do you stand? Right. It's like, you, dude, you can like aspects and not like other aspects. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that that's, that kind of falls with the majority of the people, mm-hmm. you know? But it's just an, it's an open dialogue that has been lost. Yeah. Because so, so many people are either getting negatively labeled for no reason or it's just super, like, split. Yeah. You know, yeah, like I depressing. <clears throat> an interesting point that I like to bring up all the time is you don't, regardless if you like President Trump or not, he has, for better or for worse, helped a lot of people get into politics and be interested in politics since his presidency. Oh, yeah, because it's either been shoved down their throat by news outlets or social media, or they've actually took have taken a vested interest in understanding policies to figure out who's telling the truth and who's lying. And every story that there is out there, there's elements of truth in each. It's just the embellishments that certain outlets will say in order to get more interest in their stories, Mm -hmm. which is common for anything. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that if, regardless if you hate him or if you like him, he has helped our generation particularly get very interested in politics because I mean, I don't know how many you had in school, but I didn't have any that I knew who were outright political. Whereas now, you could probably go into a high school and middle school, and there'll be a ton of people with different hard stances on politics, whether they know anything about it or not. They're just, they understand politics now. Yeah, at least at a rudimentary level. Yeah, right. Because, remember too, when we graduated, the whole culture was different. Like, where I went to school, we were just trying to get kids to wear the colors and the brand of our own school Mm -hmm. and not the private institution that you could go to and transfer out of. And we were trying to bring pride back into our own school. Mm -hmm. And then that was our main focus from staff down to students. And then we just kind of grew into each other. And I think the biggest thing too was eliminating clicks Mm -hmm. for my class specifically. I don't know about yours, but we ever since middle school just kind of, grew up together and then had each other's backs, which is pretty sweet. Obviously there were still clicks cause mm-hmm. it was high school, but it wasn't super polarized, you know? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't uncommon to have friends in four different clicks. Right. So I think that's what we were focused on where now it's, that's it. Like that's literally all that's discussed and on the news and everything else. And I don't know, man, it's wild. Even like dude, even simple things like changing the uh, speed limit. On, on the 198. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, people talk about that in school, and they're pissed off about that in schools. Because I'm in schools for work, and... Right. We, I mean, that's it's discussed. I know it is. And they're like, well, why did it happen? And they're like, well, you know, it was a goddamn knee-jerk reaction by the freaking politicians. <laughs> yeah. Everything comes back to politics. Now. Yeah, like, everything comes back to politics. And it's like, well, how come we can't change it? And it's like, you know, you want to know how you change it? You want to know how you change it? You go down to the uh, down to the post office, and you register, and then you vote. And you vote every chance you get. And it's like, dude, I, like... <laughs> It, if voting wasn't a thing until like elementary school, and they're like, "Oh, you sh- you should vote." And you're like, "What do you mean?" And like, fill in a bubble. Yeah. And I'm like, "Well, who are these people?" And they're like, "Just fill in a bubble. Like, yeah. this doesn't mean anything. We're just showing you this is what <laughs> yeah. it this is what it's like to vote." And then come to find out, we were probably in some like crazy poll, mm-hmm. and then it all got released. <laughs> you know, this is this is what six year olds are thinking. This is what Frontier High School thinks of this president. Yeah, or just like even here's an elementary school within right. Frontier's district that yeah. these are what the kids think. Who knows? It was like 2004. <laughs> <laughs> so how do how do us as a society overcome this? That, that's something just to think about. We need more whiskey if we're going to get into Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Like we we, the reason that I brought up designated survivor is I know it's a show, 
and I know that it is probably created to help people understand that there's a third party. So like I, I get the the motive behind it, but one thing that he said in there, which people mimic all the time, like they'll say the same thing, is he says we need to get to a back to a point where we're choosing the party over or country over party, which is true because back before like politics got extremely polarizing, there was one thing that unified us, which was our passion for the U.S. of A. Like, that was everything. Like, even when we talked to Chris from Western New York Heroes, which the interview will be releasing on, uh, it just released Friday, if uh, this is coming out on Monday. So go back and listen to it, because he had a great, great history, and they're doing great things over at Western New York Heroes. But even when he was talking about when 2001 hit, 9-11, everybody bonded together to help everybody out, Mm -hmm. because that was... That was the thing to do is because we all knew that this is something that's happening to our country and we need to all bond together in order to, to get that back. And that's lost now, 20 yeah. years later. Dude, it's super sad. Literally the only place that I've been in where... I'm like reliving it. So there was... So I was in fourth grade when 9-11 happened. And then I joined in 2012... After I got an associate's in college, I left for basic and AIT, and I still remembered that I wanted to so- to serve, and I joined because of 9-11. Mm-hmm. It was one of my top 10 reasons, which was in the interview. So anyways, there's – in that time frame, it's not that it was forgotten, but it was starting to move that way. And then from – I mean, dude, from like 2013 to now, it's – it's obvious mm-hmm. that some people have forgotten about 9-11. Yeah. And it drives me nuts. And then then you get the, well, I forgot because it's a conspiracy theory. It's an inside job. It's like, dude, shut up. Like, regardless of if it was or not, there was a lot of Americans that died, and we can't forget that. Right. So then, the, the only time that I've felt the same way that Chris felt on 9-11 was when he was talking about people opening up opening up their doors mm-hmm. and saying, do you want food? Do you want to take a shower in New York city was, was in the service. Cause it like race doesn't matter. Religion doesn't matter. But if you're in a U.S. uniform, even a Canadian uniform, I'm treating you the exact same way as mm-hmm. any, any American, especially if we're overseas. Like, right. I don't give a shit about what you do, what you look like, just do your job. And I got you, you got me like that. It'll never leave. In the service. Mm -hmm. And I think that that, telling you, dude, two years of service, even if it's not military service, just to do something like non-for-profit or like just go to a third world country and work for two years and then come back and then realize how good we have it and eliminate that sense of entitlement would be huge, especially now. Huge. Because, dude, even if you go to Guatemala, it's different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's a wake-up call. It's just it blows my mind, but yeah, I think I think that that's something to answer your question that we could do. It'll get worse before it gets better, but it will get better eventually. Yeah, eventually people will, people will realize that this isn't a sustainable path that we're on. No, and not it'll at get all. better, but right now it's going to get worse. Mm-hmm. Especially if Trump wins, there's going to be on both sides. There's they're just going to keep going after each other, and if someone else wins, they're going to keep going after each other. Twenty twenty is going to be a tough election year. Yeah. Because people are going to be even more divided. But I think that in the second half of his term, in 2022, people will start coming together. Because they're not going to be worried about him getting a third term because it can't happen. Correct. So they'll start working together. And there'll be less extremists from a policy standpoint and more let's work across the aisle. Because we know that we need to work together. And I, I just think that 2022 will be different. I'm curious to see who runs both sides in 2024. Mm-hmm. It's going to be super interesting. But yeah, I agree. I think that people are going to come. I agree. I agree. I agree. I think yeah, people I are going to. Yeah, that's true, man. <laughs> yeah, I think people are probably going to focus on it. But at the same time, it's. Oof. Yeah. 
Oof. Long road. Buzz your girlfriend. Woof. Yeah. Long road to get there. But in the meantime, we'll drink some whiskey. Mike, what do we got here today? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. We got Cask and Crew. Oh. More Cask and Crew. More Cask and Crew. We got their warm roasted orange peel whiskey, which, again, Mary, Derek, and I discussed this whiskey while we tasted it during the interview that happened at their headquarters. So if you have not watched that, go check it out. I'll link it in the channel after. Boom. The whiskey is essentially eliminating ingredients needed to make an OF or old fashioned. So, however you want to acknowledge For your peasants out there, old fashioned. Yeah, I want to just however you acknowledge that <laughs> cocktail. Um, so, it's it tastes just like an OF. So, all you would need is ice and then bitters, mm-hmm. and you got what you need to make an OF yep. out of this, and then just pour this, and you're good. If you want to add a cherry, go ahead, but it's pretty simple. So it's good. It's smooth. And it's not overpower. Oh, goodness. I got so excited. I just had like a brain fart. It's not overpowering (laughs) in regards to the orange tang, tangerine. It truly tastes like an old fashioned. Yeah. It's more old fashioned than orange. It's just oranges in the name. Mm -hmm. It's a light color. It's good. And it's smooth. There's literally no burn. I bet that there was probably some sort of legalities behind them not being able to call it an old-fashioned. Yeah, that's a good question for Mary. Should I ask her? Yeah. Um, But again, just like the other casting crew, this one is 51% three-year-old Canadian rye, 49% barrel-aged American corn whiskey. Um, Yeah, very, very good, just like an old-fashioned. 35% alcohol, so about uh, 70 proof. Mm Mm-hmm. And you can really get these at any convenience store, or not convenience store, but uh, any liquor store around here for like, what, 25, 30 bucks or something? They're they're on the cheaper end. Yeah, we, we should tell our family and friends that we do not call liquor stores convenience stores now yeah. because we're alcoholics. Um, <laughs> they are very so, convenient for my liquor, though. Yeah, so definitely drink <laughs> responsibly, guys. <laughs> my goodness. So, you want to go to the convenience store and yeah. pick up a bottle? <laughs> I in I wonder if this is if this is something that we can ask the next distillery that we interview. But you know how we've been talking a lot with the distilled spirits, um, like the the head distillers and owners of these companies about their how their laws differ from wine laws yeah. and how they're able to ship, but distilled spirits aren't. I wonder what the difference is, and if eventually there'll be a push in New York State to start selling distilled spirits and wines in liquor stores and gas stations because beer's in there. So why can't wine or liquor be in there? Is it because of alcohol content? But if so, you're not drinking the beer and driving. So you're still picking up alcohol somewhere and bringing it home to drink. I bought wine in Greece before. Yeah. It's amazing. In in different states, you can. Mm -hmm. Right? Or am I making that up? In different states, you can buy in grocery stores. Yeah. You can 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 buy wine in Target. In other states. Yeah, amazing. not here, though. Yeah, Correct. Yeah, not here. In, like, Dude, Tops, Wegmans, you, do, you can't do anything on. except for buy beer. The hell can you do here? <laughs> Surprise, the oxygen is tax in New York State. <laughs> God. Also, don't take that idea, politicians. Yeah, I'm don't. not telling you to tax our oxygen. Yeah. All of our politicians that we have listening to this. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I, I wonder. That's true. The government's always watching. <laughs> <laughs> Conspiracy theory, man. Yeah, they're always there. <laughs> Don't be surprised. They're actually inside your microphones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'm safe inside my mind. At least I'm safe inside my mind. <laughs> Love it. Oh, my God. Just subtle SpongeBob. Mid- <laughs> this is a mi- uh, mid-episode mic check. But I wonder what like has to happen in order for wine and distilled spirits to be able to sell in probably gas just, stations and grocery stores. Probably just pass legislation. You know? Yeah. Because a lot of the, a lot of the gas stations around here are chains. I mean, Speedway just yeah, bought true. every Sunoco. Yeah, and Mobile, they bought everything. I know. And now there's one on like each side of the street, a yeah. four way, like this yep. one right up here. There's one right across from me. So they close one down. I know. God, yep. it's a, it, dude, it's a riot. But I mean, you know it what's is still there? Though. You know what's still there? What? Quick fill. Staying strong. Yeah, staying strong. Staying strong. Did you go to Quick Fill, right? Yeah. Hell yeah. Quick Fill is actually owned by a New York State billionaire. Oh really? Yeah. Tax him. He actually doesn't want to do any business in Buffalo anymore. He doesn't want to open up really? any more quick fills. Yeah. They, uh, he got burned by one of the towns 
because he had a vacant lot that he was going to make a quick fill, but he didn't. He just sat on it, and then the town basically tried to take it back from him, so he sued the town. There was a whole sure. article about it in the news. Yeah. Do you know what town it was? You don't have to say it on air, but do you know? Yeah, I can tell you after. Okay, perfect. Let's just say it's not south. Perfect. Yeah. I could have I could have probably guessed that. Yeah. Yeah. It rhymes with Billiamsville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good old Billville. <laughs> good old Billville. <laughs> Oh, awesome. But anyway, so speaking of old fashions, I finally, finally went to that Lucky Day bar in Buffalo, dude. Talk about it. So sick. How's the atmosphere? It's it's so cool. So were you ever there when it was Century Grill? No, I don't get out much. <laughs> so it, it used to be this bar Century Grill. It was cool, but it was more of like a more of like a pub bar type thing, whereas now it's an actual whiskey bar. Mm-hmm. So you go in there, and there is there has to be like eight levels of whiskey just everywhere. Levels to the bezels. Yep, mm-hmm. levels all the way to the top bezels. And they have everything that you can even imagine. So I drank two glasses of scotch, obviously. My objective now is whenever I go to a new bar, I need to try a new whiskey, bourbon, or scotch, or rye, or whatever. So it has to be something new. Right now, I'm on scotch. Love it. So what did you try? Glenn Fittick 12 and Lefroy 10. Sweet. Yeah, very good. Lefroy, very spoky, very peppery. You would not like it. No. But Glenn Fittick 12, you would love. Okay. It is delicious. Okay. It's similar, although all the Scotch snobs are going to come at me because I'm saying this, but it's similar in like. They're they're floral. They're they're nice and like smooth notes, as like a Glenlivet twelve or Glenlivet fifteen. So you you would definitely like the Glenfiddich. Yeah, it's very very good. Yeah, I got a bottle of Glenlivet fifteen at my house. Hell yeah. wa- waiting for my brother in law to come over so we can open it. Yeah, and I got that bottle of Oak and Toshin up there. Oak and Tosh. dude, so much melon, <laughs> so much melon. But when you go to a place like that, what do you? What is your go to? I know we talk about cocktails a lot cocktails a lot you know so what do you what do you normally like to drink when you get there do you go straight for the neat or do you just yeah get a no no i yeah. i only drink neat when i'm out when did that happen for you where you're just because i remember always and i still do this every once in a while but i'll go to a nice place like that and say i like bourbon or whiskey make me whatever cocktail you want right but now i don't even feel like doing that anymore because i like drinking stuff neat about a month and a half ago i started because hmm. you know pod so recent yeah Yeah. real recent because otherwise i would just go out and if i didn't i had two things i'd either buy a beer and then i'd just get whatever beer i was in the mood for or i would get jameson and ginger jack and coke um rum and cokes whatever and then i would just stick to that if i didn't want to bloat feel like garbage the next day whatever i would drink whiskey but now it's if i'm going out i'll have either a cocktail with dinner and then colleen will get either a cocktail or wine and then but then she always complains of a hot flash, and she's like, I'm just so warm in here. It's like, well, you just had an insane amount of red wine. What do you expect is going to happen? I'm all flush. Yeah. So, um, or if I'm if I'm just going out for a drink, it's it's always neat. Yeah. Now. Yeah. So I don't, the last time. Do you go bourbon, or do you go yeah, scotch? No, yeah. I go bourbon. Yeah. And have, then, do you have a favorite right now? Of like, not a, not a local bourbon, because we do. Everyone who watches our show knows what our favorite is so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but red, do you have red like breast. A red breast? Yeah. yeah, yeah, nice. It's good. Yeah, really good. I like Bullet if I'm going bourbon. Do you? just because it's a, it's a cheap pour, mm-hmm. but it's still good. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not like your your double scotch that I get. I make it last too. Like I'm not sitting. Oh there. yeah, I'm not doing what I'm doing it. here. Yeah, because yeah. here it's let's, let's go. Yeah, let's you know? just. Chug it, yeah, man. let's let's crush these ratings. So but. actually, that kind of brings up an interesting point because uh, we are about halfway through. Mm-hmm. Um, we have been putting these eyedroppers in for quite a bit of our episodes. Yeah, and I got message the other day, Derek. What's the eyedropper for? Well, let me tell you what it's for because we haven't talked about it in a while. Oh man! So oh yeah, and we picked up some new subs. So we got we picked come. up some new subs. We got a lot of them because yeah. of this. Uh, Western New York Heroes thing. So if you haven't showed Western New York Heroes some love, um, definitely go give them a like and a follow on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Go listen to that interview with them because they're helping us out, which is ultimately going to help them out, which is going to help us out, which is going to help them out, which is going to help us out, which is going to help them out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm getting at? Um, Yeah, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, hell yeah. So 
go go give them a follow because it's great. But um, so this eyedropper, which actually I'm gonna stand up and grab really quick if I don't take down everything that I. Oh, big old stretch. Nailed it. Got it. People are going to see that weird face in the camera. So this but, is uh, the non-homogenous, homogenous <laughs> leaf lock water that we got. So what is it we really? We have been... Uh, actually, I'll wait till I'm done with the first glass to put it in. The second glass. Um, so it's reverse osmosis distilled water made with hemlock leaf. And what it is, is it is just basically distilled water. And it is used... You, you put some in the, your drink... To separate the oils from the the liquid, so if you are if your whiskey is very oily, a lot of the harsh scents and smells and everything will come to the top. So that first initial sip or smell is going to be very prominent with the flavors that are in this whiskey. So we do that so we can get a different type of flavor when we're drinking these whiskeys. Mm-hmm. But if you put too much in, it'll water down and it'll taste like shit. Right. So you can only do like three drops, two drops. Yeah, yeah, two to three drops, depending on how much is in your glass. And yeah. it's kind of interesting how we literally know, oh, looking at this, this is this is about a two-dropper. Mm-hmm. And then we can gauge it. We have issues, man. That's what it comes down yeah, to. Yeah, we got, we got a problem. But yeah, uh, so real quick, let's touch on Western New York Heroes. Then yeah. we'll do cocktail section. Then we'll rate. Okay. All right. So we partnered with Western New York Heroes, and we are going to donate a portion of all the proceeds that we earn selling merchandise for this podcast and donating donating it to them. Uh, They began in 2007, and they provide immediate financial assistance to those in need that are located and work in the, uh, currently they're in 12 counties of Western New York. So they have... But I thought they were only eight counties of Western New York, Mike. (laughs) Yeah. You would think. So there's actually 12. There's actually more. There's actually 18 or something, right? 17? 17. Yeah. Right now they're in 12. So they're right that. to the left of Syracuse. Any, anything left or, of Syracuse on a map. So yeah. anything west of Syracuse is considered western New York. Once you hit Syracuse, it's central New York. Not upstate for you downstate oh, listeners. God, that makes me cringe every time. Seriously. So anyways, <laughs> Western New York Heroes has uh, grants and programs. Also, none of it is federally funded. All of it is funded by the people of Western New York. Which is something that you and I wanted to make sure that we did. Correct. We didn't want to be partnering with a federal, an organization that's already getting federal funding. Yes. Because then, as you guys are buying merchandise and supporting us and a local vet uh, foundation, you don't necessarily know where your money is going on a federal level. Um, just because it's it's so big at that point. So we're keeping it small and directly allowing it to affect our community in a positive way. So Western New York Heroes has programs and grants like Positive for Heroes, which are service dogs. You, They also provide uh, scholarships, school supplies, some auto assistance, sports and activities as well um, for veterans and their families, which is huge. Mm-hmm. So Chris is the co-founder and president. He joined the army in 97 um he actually joined earlier but then he had a leg issue and then had a break of service and then came back he was a medic or his primary mos was a 68 whiskey for those that are listening that served um so he was involved in different operations spanning from 98 to 2003 where he deployed he was then hit by an id while serving in iraq during operation iraqi freedom um from there he got treatment up until 2010, where he then got full uh, 100% disability from the VA, and then he got trained by local and federal agents in regards to de-escalation situations for veterans versus police. Mm -hmm. So he went out, and then say if there was like a barricaded suspect, which is a a law enforcement term, and that suspect was a veteran, he would show up and then work with the negotiators to basically... De-escalate the situation. Yeah, de-escalate it, but using better words because obviously words mean things right so he did everything in his power to speak a language that was in fact de-escalating um because Mm -hmm. sometimes negotiators didn't know that they were offending um just because their training wasn't prepared for the veterans coming back from Mm -hmm. that first initial push in 03 um so they're on every major social media platform you could think of they have a massive audience they do a lot in the area every day um they have a board that is over 10 people and they are extremely active. They work very hard and Chris is just really, really down to earth. Yeah. Super good dude. And every single thing he does is 
in the best interest of the veteran community and their families um, because he was there. I mean, he lost everything, and now he earned it all back. Yeah. So we're selling uh, T-shirts, so we should announce that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude. Stoked. So we got small, medium, large, extra large. We're about already halfway sold based off of essentially pre-orders from Mm -hmm. fans that have been listening to us from the get-go. So we appreciate you guys. Um, But we have a very nice blend t-shirt where we partnered up with Queen City Creative Works. And they put our logo, uh, which you can see on the the chalkboard, on the shirt. Um, It's on the left breast pocket, basically. And... $25 $25 in cash and, or Venmo or PayPal, we're going to apply sales tax based on whatever state you are in. Uh, for example, New York State, it's $27.19. So You have a tattooed on your left arm, I think, by at this point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the amount. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, regardless of if you're blood or not, the, the <laughs> amount of the shirt is the amount of the shirt. I'm not giving you a shirt. Reason being is this is 1,000% going to charity. So we're not a thousand percent. Let's not say it that way. A portion yeah. of the proceeds are going to yeah, charity. A thousand percent as in a portion of the proceeds are going to a foundation. We don't want any legal trouble, man. We yeah, don't want a thousand percent of these shirts going to charity. You know what right. I'm saying? That's going to help a, a local veteran and his family. So we're not trying to, you know, skip on on them. Um, yeah. So don't don't cut corners. Do the right thing. Yeah. So cheers to merchandise. And kind of just also with the Western Air Heroes. Just to give you guys a little teaser to get you interested in going to watch the episode. Mike and I almost cried at a portion of that interview because we were just so like taken back by taken aback, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. by uh just like some of the emotional sentiments that they give to sponsors of dogs of the you know what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. So there's there's a lot behind positive for heroes. Um but yeah, you uh if you think I'm this hard alpha male there's a there's a lot of pulling on the heartstrings oh, yeah. in a segment, and you get to see. I don't know if I'm blocking you or not in the camera angle, but you probably are. But that's fine. Okay, I'm not important in that scene. <laughs> you find so there's a <laughs> yeah. So you will you will definitely yeah. see my authentic reaction to what it you know what it's about. Yeah. Um, and also too, we should note that we didn't just interview Chris. Uh, Lynn was there as well. Who is a riot? Yeah, a riot. She was awesome. Uh, you want to talk about her title? Do you have it written down? Yeah, she's a uh, program director. Program director, yeah. yeah. So she was there also. Both of them served. Uh, very, very awesome interview. Even if you just want to listen for their story, it's a very good story, and they're a great. They're two great people. So definitely go listen to it if you have time. Yeah, absolutely. Oof. Oh God. Yeah, that was that was awesome. That was a good interview. Very. Thank you so much for hosting us. And I don't even have the uh, thing down here yet. Oh, really? We got a... Uh, next episode. Yeah, we'll tease it now. Episode, yeah. Next episode, it'll there's be uh There's going to be a new prop up here somewhere. Um, Keep an eye out. Yeah. So... Let us know when you see it. So, yeah. So, if you're interested in a t-shirt, um, let us know. Drop a comment, DM, message, like, anything. Or email. Or at email. At happy hour podcast at gmail.com. Boom. That'll also be linked somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. Just let us know, and then we're, we're almost out. So, first come, first serve, and then... It, don't worry, we'll come back with more products. But yeah. initial batch is uh is out and ready for sale. Hell yeah, boom! Good shit, man. Good shit. All right, you ready for this? Yeah, dude. All right, Derek, drop that beat for the cocktail section. Cocktails. I've done that one before, but it's my favorite. What episode? I don't know. But I have. I felt like I was watching the very beginning of someone's section in a skate video. There you go. Where they did like a simple line just to kind of tease it. Yeah. Just like showing a kickflip tail slide kickflip out or something. Yeah, just something simple where they showed off how baggy their pants were. Yeah. So, all right. My cocktail is the orange roasted margarita. Ooh. It's two ounces of the roasted orange whiskey, one ounce of triple sec, two triple ounces... Sec. Two ounces of fresh lime juice, of course, the salted rim, and then you add an orange garnish. Actually looked really good, too. Yeah. Are you a margarita fan? Um, Only on Tuesdays, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't hate me. Yeah, dude, know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> so mine is uh, what we were talking about a little earlier, man. Out with the old, in with the orange. 
Oh, man. Because that makes sense. Bold statement. Nailed it. Really what it is is just taking this and making it an old-fashioned, which you don't really need to do much. So two ounces of this orange roasted cask and crew whiskey. Then you have uh, a couple dashes of bitters. And then you just top with the cherry. That's all you need to make this a beautiful Mm old-fashioned. That's it. It's sensational. It is. Because old fashions are our favorite cocktails to begin with, so why not put it in a bottle? Right. This was very smart of them to do. Yeah. Because it doesn't burn, you're not going to be upcharged. Because you can get an old fashioned with any bourbon or any whiskey that you want, and they'll upcharge you. Like if you get an old fashioned made with Jack Daniels, or you get an old fashioned made oh with my Red Breast or something like that. Dude, right? even like Woodford Reserve, yeah. it adds like seven dollars. Right. So you get this in a whole bottle. For twenty five bucks, thirty bucks, dude. I know it's, it's crazy. So if you're into old fashions, definitely pick some of this up, and let us know what you think. H- have you guys tried this before? Leave us a comment below. Let us know if you had, because I've seen this around already. I thought you lost your mind and you were talking to some random ghost in the background. Yeah. Have you guys tried this? Hey, have you guys tried this already? <laughs> no. Yeah. All right, perfect. No, they haven't. All right, <laughs> Cleo has not tried this yet. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I'm surprised she's been quiet. She has been. She's probably dead upstairs. No. Oh my god. Oh my god. She's probably just. <laughs> She's probably just hosting the Spectrum guy. Yeah, really. Or she's talking to ghosts. She does that all the time where she'll just, like, stare into the wall like this. And I'm like, Cleo, what are you doing? And she'll just, like, keep staring at the wall. I'm like, Jesus, can you stop? You're freaking me out, man. She's such a creep. She's so weird. It, it must be a terrier thing. Does Sam do that at all? No. Sam has my personality, so he's literally just running around and then playing with his balls and toys and... Nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm, so he has, this is still going to sound horrible until I finish the sentence, but he's got multiple balls, as in his toys, his toy balls. Not, you know, that. Either way, you know what? Know We're going to move saying. on. <laughs> Let's talk about the rating of this whiskey, Derek. <laughs> Good Lord. This is a, so correct me if I'm wrong, Michael, but this is going to come out after the Super Bowl? Or is this going to come out before the Super Bowl? This is going to come out after the Super Bowl. Dude, I don't even know when the Super Bowl is. Is it the 4th? No, the 4th is a Tuesday. I don't even know when the Super Bowl is. Right? No, why? Because I'm going to do the same thing Tom Brady's doing, sitting on his couch watching it, bro. Yeah, yeah, dude. Thank God. That's like, there's that pie, and there's a small section that are rooting for Kansas City, very small section that are rooting for San Francisco, and everybody else is just so happy that Tom Brady's not in it. 100%. And he's not going to be on the Patriots next year. Anyway. There's, there's rumors that he's going to the Chargers. Dude, there's rumors that he's going everywhere. Yeah. Except to Buffalo. Yeah. Which is good because we wouldn't want him. No, we actually just signed Barkley for two years. Good. Yeah. Yeah. He's a he's a good backup. He just needs more reps. Like he's good for Allen. Yeah. It's like yeah, a big true. brother dad role, which is what Allen needs. We should get Fitz back. Fitz is my man. Dude, even if we got Fitz back, part of his beard would still be in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lose your there whiskey. You go. So every Miami game is a home game for him then. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> he's like, hey guys, just walk across my beard. <laughs> Just take my beard route. It's, it's the so fastest huge. route down to Florida. He walks so pompous. Like, he puts his chest out, man. Yeah. You know why? Because he went to Harvard. Yeah. That's he's, why. There's probably a study that he read where it, he understands the eloquence and the significance of good posture. Yeah. So, who but knows, he looks man? like so smug. Like a bat weeble that just bit Jim Halpert. Under the, you know what oh I'm saying? Oh, my goodness. Dude. <laughs> just so smug and arrogant. I wonder if Fitz has weapons all around his house, like Dwight has weapons all around the office. Do you think he does? Do you th- do you think that Fitz is a violent man? Like, no, out of the field. That dude is probably the greatest dad next to Philip Rivers. And the only reason I say right, that just is just because Philip Rivers has seventeen thousand kids. Dude, literally, he's got dad. his tribe. <laughs> he can make a whole offense. I know, it, dude. He can just do his own thing. I, <laughs> I think he's his, up to nine. I think he's got nine. He has kids. nine kids. Him and his wife. So it's eleven. That's literally a full side of the football field. It's a village, bro. You can raise a village, man, right? Isn't that what the phrase is? I don't know. It takes a village? It takes a village. It takes a village to raise a village. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's what Moana said. Anyways, all right, let's <laughs> let's rate this whiskey. <laughs> all right. Label Cask branding. and Crew. Cask and Crew label branding. It's it's uh, similar to their others. It's just orange. But it's actually got a nice little... Look at that. It's got like a nice little twist to it where it's kind of pleasant to look at. Ooh, the orange peel. yeah. yeah. Oh, orange they, peel. Yeah, Got it. They, nice. peeled the, they peeled the orange. Good one. I like that. Yeah, that's a nice little touch. I like that. So I give this an A+. Plus. A+, plus, dude. A+, plus, you agree? Sure. Boom. All right. Nose. I'm, I'm getting, honestly, all, like... Orange. Orange. Yeah. 
There's no whiskey. No. It's it smells what you would want it to smell like when you read the label. Like this isn't lying to you when it comes out. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're so comparing this to an actual old fashioned. With an old fashioned, you get hints of orange, but mostly whiskey. This you're getting mostly orange, hints of whiskey. Mm-hmm. So this nose is very orangey. Which is good, but it's not dynamic, you know what I'm saying? So like it's just a? one it's just one yeah. I would probably say A. A. Not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's not really dynamic. It's well, no, literally it's still just got orange. An a. Yeah. The nose is literally doing better than I ever did in high school. So <laughs> <laughs> What was your GPA in high school? Do you know? My GPA? Mm-hmm. No. I just know that my class rank was one hundred. Out of? From the bottom. I had four hundred and Nine kids graduate in my graduating class. You're 100 from the bottom. Yeah, bro. I was nice. 309. Boy, I think I was. <laughs> Dude, I spent. I think more I was time... middle of the pack. Were you? Yeah, I think I was like one. I think we had about 220 in my graduating class. Right. And I think I was like 110. I sucked in high school. I had a 36 my first two semesters in college, though. Oh yeah. I didn't care until college. Yeah. I was too busy playing Me football too. and yeah. working out. I graduated with a 38. Yeah, dude, you crushed it when we were at Hilbert. Yeah. Like the actual school? That's a teacher's pet, bro. Yeah, no kidding. I'm surprised you didn't come with a bushel of apples to every new professor. You weren't in all my classes. Do you know who I am? No? Well, now you do. Enjoy a fruit. <laughs> Anyways. I'm going to be a co-host of a very successful podcast someday. Initial taste. Since this taste was just... Wow. Just this, 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 this. Sounds like a sign that I'm going... Just gonna ramble off and I'm trying to figure out what the not the ending notes, but like if you had to break it up. Cause everything has a stage, right? There's a beginning and an end to everything. So the end of the initial taste before you get to the ending note, because I feel like the ending note is more of the overall aftertaste. But you get that middle segment when you drink and you're like, okay, what does it taste yeah, like? It's right almost in the like a like a sugar. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, you get the first initial zap of orange, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then after that, you get, like, it's, a sugar sweet. Yeah. Like, salty. There's a, it, like you said, there's a zip of it. Yeah. And then it ends with a little bit of a, a little acidity, too, right? Is this made with real oranges? That's the question of the day right there. It does say no artificial flavors, but I still don't know what that means. Yeah, don't ask me either, because I bombed chemistry back in the day. Oh, corrected with hints of warm roasted orange peel. So there really is orange in here. All right. Well, that makes sense. So what would you rate the initial taste? A plus. Yeah. Orange. I agree. This is a very, very, very good whiskey, but it's very one-dimensional. I just want to throw that out there. This is perfect for cocktails. Correct. We're drinking it neat. Yes. Which is, you know, why? This is a very, very good whiskey, but... It's, we've had a lot of multi-dimensional whiskeys up here. Yeah. They're- which which they weren't. So just to level set, before we get to our final rating, they didn't want this to be like a go, like hit it out of the park. Oh, correct. Or else they wouldn't have made the double oak rye, which was fantastic, which was one of our favorites. Yeah. They meant for this to be like, oh, okay, you want to keep up with your boyfriend? Like your boyfriend's going to be drinking whiskey. Do you want whiskey? Here you go. Here's a beautifully flavored alcoholic beverage that tastes like whiskey that's really what they wanted yeah so don't be shocked if it's not up there with the 97s but it's still good Mm -hmm. so i don't know you probably were gonna give it the 97 you love this so what would you because i'm basic (laughs) yeah so what do you want to rate the ending note i'm gonna give it an a plus as well because you get that sweetness a little bit of the burnt like the orange burnt and then it ends with like that acidity Slash whiskey. Yeah, I I, I concur. Taste. I concur. It's good. It's good. So right. the ending note you would say is zest. Yeah, that's a good one. Zest. Yeah. Zest. Look and at you, dude. College word. Listen, don't. That's all I got. My brain power is gone. <laughs> Are you ready? You want to... Oh. There she is. There she is. She's ready. It's Buffalo Happy Hour, guys. Anything other than zest or just zest? 
Make a sweet zest. Okay, well, let's go zest. I like that. All right. All right. Give me that countdown for the final rating. All right. Three, two, one, 91. 90.5. Perfect. 90.5. 90.5. Again, good whiskey. Very good sipper. Very good in cocktails. But one dimensional. I opened this throughout the holidays and people loved it, but it was just that. It was a sipper. Nobody complained. Everybody enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And they, they were drinking whiskey. They were happy they were drinking whiskey. And then it just kind of flowed through the, the evening until we got to uh, wine with dinner. Mm-hmm. It was good. Yeah. It's definitely a good drinker. Yeah. That's what they call me. Good drinker. All right, Michael. That's well, funny. you want to wrap this up? Yeah, dude. We're doing good. We are. We're doing good. We're freaking 18 episodes in. Yeah. We have a lot more content for everybody. Make sure you share this. Everybody, share it. This is the only way that it's going to help us grow. We have so much stuff coming up next week or in two weeks. No, next week because when weeks. this airs. Yeah. Next week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm excited. We had a lot of, yeah. Literally, we won't sit down. We're going to leave I feel work. like I'm drowning right now. I know. This is a full-time job now. It really is. I'm back to working 80 hours a week. My mom's pissed again. I'm always out. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, we're worried about the sirens. But, yeah, really. But, yeah, we got a lot of stuff coming up. But the only thing that's going to help us grow if, is if you share it. You're up to water, man. Share it. The only thing that's going to help us is if you share it. Um, no, but you got to share it. Because if... Or even tag people in our posts. We post on our Buffalo Happy Hour Instagram at the Buffalo Happy Hour 12. We post there every day. Mm-hmm. Every single day we're posting. We're posting recommended cocktails. We're posting about the episodes that we just uploaded. We're posting now clips on our Instagram TV. Like, who even does that? We're doing that now. We're, we are. We're doing. We're killing it, bro. Killing the game. Oh, but yeah. comment someone that you uh, maybe would like to see some of our content because we got a lot of stuff coming out. We're only going to grow if our subscribers help us grow. You know. That's right. Tell so, some friends about us. So give us some love, and uh, you know we will see you next week. Absolutely. This has been episode eighteen of the Buffalo Happy Hour, Mike. Derek, I'll see you real soon. Yep. Literally, don't have a choice. We're out. <laughs>